Welcome. I am Helen Graves, an instructional designer for CVC and AT1, which stands for California Virtual Campus. And AT1 is the online network of educators, which is the professional development arm of the CVC. Today, I want to show you how you can use Screencast-O-Matic and Studio to create high quality video content. Now, why is video a good thing? Well, because it's a simple and powerful way to add instructor presence to your course. The more ways you can connect with your students as a real human being instead of just text on a page, the greater likelihood of their success in the class. Video is also good because it allows you to present content in multiple formats, which can meet differing learning needs and preferences. So both of these outcomes promote engagement for all students and specifically can help close equity gaps. Screencast-O-Matic and Studio are going to build and strengthen your course design toolbox. So Screencast-O-Matic has both screenshot and recording capabilities, plus lots of pretty simple editing features. You can record for free, but if you want the editing tools, you're going to need to upgrade to the deluxe account. It's only about 20 bucks a year, I think, so it's a pretty good deal. To sign up, you're going to go to screencastomatic.com, and I will go ahead and put that in the chat. Give me one second. If you don't already have an account, there is also a Screencastomatic app where you can record, edit, and share on an Android, but I will admit I don't do much of anything on my phone, so I haven't used the app but I wanted you to know that it's available if you are a phone kind of person. You're gonna need a webcam and a microphone in order to use, to record effectively. I'm on a Mac, so I have both of those built in. And if you're using the phone app, you're gonna have the same capabilities. On a PC, you may need to purchase a webcam and a mic if you don't have them already. So let me show you how the interface works and how to use the tools. So we're going to dive right into Screencast-O-Matic itself. So I am now in my account. I've already, I signed up years ago. So I've got the premium account, which allows me to have all of the editing features and everything. And so when you're in the account area, you're going to notice there are these three little icons on the right. And there's a screenshot um, tool. There is a recorder tool, and then there's the editing tool. On this landing page, it's going to show all the videos that I've created in descending chronological order. I believe you can do filters and searches and all that kind of stuff. Screencast-O-Matic has a number of useful video tutorials that can help you learn how to use it. And you can get them by clicking on your account button. And from there, you can see the tutorials option. You also, if you're just on that regular screencastomatic.com homepage, you can see they have a resources tab, which will also have all of the tutorials for you. They're short, they're easy to follow. As you're getting started, especially, they can be a really nice, quick reminder how to perform a particular task. I used them a lot at the beginning. I don't use Screencast-O-Matic for screenshots, so I don't have any images in my content library, but of course you can. You can organize things in folders if you like. You can create channels for sharing, much like you do in YouTube. I don't use my Screencast-O-Matic in that way, so I don't have any channels. The two buttons that I use the most, and you probably will use most often, are the, get out of there, the launch recorder and the open video editor. So let's look at recording. The recording application itself is not cloud-based, even though your account is in the cloud. So the first time you use the video recording application, it's going to actually have you download it to your device. And I can't show you that part because it's already installed on my device. So I'm going to click Launch Recorder, and it's going to say Launched. If you were doing it for the first time, instead of that message, you would get some message, and I don't recall what it looks like or says, but basically it would say, do you want to download the application? And it would have you go through whatever download process you do on your PC or your Mac. 
So I started the recorder and I'm now gonna see, and hopefully you're seeing it as well, the zebra stripes, which indicate the recording area. And I can grab the handles in the corner to change the size if I want to. I can grab this handle in the center if I wanna move the entire window to a particular area on the desktop. Um, I could also come over into the, uh, what would I call this? The control panel, essentially, and I have some options there. And if you hover over things, it's gonna basically tell you what that particular tool will do. A little pop-up will come up if you're not sure. So one of the really nice options is you can record your desktop, you can record webcam, and you can also record both. You've got other, and I'll talk more about that in a moment. You've got other tools. Um, I never use the maximum time, but I suppose there might be a reason why you would wanna set a time limit on how long things are gonna go, but it's there for you if you want it. You can do, as I showed you, a custom size, but you could also do standard if you know you're gonna be like on a, um, what do we call it, you know, PowerPoint presentation or Google Slides where it's the standard presentation size, you could use one of those choices if you want to have it be um, a default standard size. You've also got the narration option. If you are using an external microphone, that's where you'd find it and select it. As you can see, mine is doing the default MacBook microphone. If I had a um, external one, it would show up here and I could click that if I wanted to be recording through my microphone. You've got computer audio. So if you wanted the keyboard sounds to be heard for some reason, or if you're going to be recording a YouTube video that is playing, and so the sound is gonna be coming from your computer. You can turn on the computer audio so that the recording is catching everything from the computer, not just from the microphone. So you've got a lot of different options. There's also preferences. I usually keep the default. The only thing I change is I wanna, when my, I'm done recording, I go straight to editing because I always end up having to edit my stuff. Um, but you may wanna change hotkeys and things like that. So you've got a lot of different options there. To record, you're just gonna hit the record button. It starts counting down, and let me do one for you. Gives you a little warning, and then it starts recording. I can pause in the middle of a recording by just hitting the pause button. You can see it played for four seconds, almost five seconds, and then I can do whatever I need to do and then start it again, and it will continue recording from that point. I tend to add things like arrows, call out boxes, text, you know, et cetera. After I've done the recording, I do it in the editing platform, but you do have in this recording options, the draw and zoom menu here, which when you click it, it way up here, hopefully you can see that it's got the draw zoom menu up at the top. So I could, be adding my arrows and things right here while I'm doing the recording. My brain doesn't like to do that. I prefer to just record and then later go back in and add whatever, but you've got the option to do it right during the recording if you like to. And I'll show you more about editing later, but you can do freehand, you can add lines, arrows, boxes, you can highlight things, you can do a text, all kinds of stuff. You can change the color of it, the size of it, Etc. So I'm going to, well, in fact, let me do this. I'm going to add an arrow just so you can see. I'm going to start the recording again. It always counts down. And then when I stop, if I want to preview it, oh, it's not letting me preview. We'll do the preview later. But in any case, I would have that first part, if you recall, where I recorded with no arrow, and then I added the arrow. So when I go ahead and do the editing, all of a sudden the arrow will pop in there um, when I added it in. You can see down here the length of your video. The trash can, as I'm sure you can guess, lets you delete the recording and start all over. I use that one a lot. 
The done button is when you finished recording and you like what you did and you're ready to edit it and save it. While you're recording, you can switch from between the webcam and the desktop view. And you can even have your webcam open in this little window, like you see, I have it open on the desktop view. And if it's not visible, you can click this little thing. Whoops, that's not it. Where did it go? Oh, it's not showing me. There. OK, I had to get out of the Zoom tool in order to see. So if I started off with the full screen, because you know at the beginning of the recording, you want your students to see you and hear you and get that FaceTime, that humanized presence, then I could pause and switch to be a different if I just want to go to desk, uh, desktop only or if I want the little recording window in the corner. So you can change the view partway through. The trick is you have to start with either full screen, uh, what am I trying to say? Webcam totally or the um, partial view in order to change it partway through. When you play around with it, you're gonna find that out. But just wanted to let you know, you have the option of changing what the students are seeing, whether it's your full desktop or your full face or whatever, as you go through the video. And it's really nice because it means you can be visible at the beginning or any point really, but especially at the beginning to put in a little FaceTime. Being able to see and hear you is a simple yet very powerful way to humanize your content. And then you can just toggle off screen later when you're ready to focus on whatever you're going to be presenting in your video. So I'm going to get rid of this one. It's as simple as that. And then it starts over. And I want to be full screen first. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to record a little bit of it. And there we go. We're just doing a test recording. Now I'm going to pause it. I'm going to come here and change the view so it's only the desktop now. And I'm going to do a little bit more recording just so you can see when I play it back. So now we're doing a little bit more recording. Stop it. I'll say done. Wait, there we go. Nope, it's there we go. We're just doing a test recording. Now I'm going to pause it. So now we're doing a little bit more recording. Stop. OK, so that was just to show you that you can change it in the middle. I'm going to trash that one as well because I don't want it. I find that I may need to re-record something a few times before I've really got the version that I'm ready to edit and use. So don't worry if that happens to you, especially at the beginning. You also don't need to worry about making sure your video is perfect. Human beings make mistakes. We say, um, we look off as we're thinking. We do all kinds of things. So don't worry that you need to be a polished professional with complete error-free videos. You also don't want to you know, fumble your way through. So you're going to want to think about it. You're going to want to make sure it's a good recording and all of that. But don't worry about having to trash a few of them before you get to the version that you're ready to edit. edit. A little pro tip. If you're recording and you realize, oops, I stumbled over that word, you don't have to throw out the whole video. If you make a mistake, but you want to keep the recording, just let three or four seconds of silence go by. Then when you're editing, it's really easy to find that spot in the video because you'll see the blank spot. When we go to the editing, you'll see what I mean, but the, um, you'll see the audio stuff and then there'll be a blank spot of three to four seconds. So you know that's where you're gonna go and cut out that mistake you made. So don't think if you're five minutes in or 10 minutes in that you've got to throw out the whole thing because you made a mistake. Just let that silence go by and then you can cut out whatever you did and continue on with what you're doing. Once I've made the recording and I'm ready to polish it up for the final version, I would then select done. The pop-up menu actually um, normally gives you some choices. You can save it as is, which I never do. You can um, either save it to your computer or to your Screencast-O-Matic account. There is also a quick share option, but I rarely use that. Before we go into editing, 
I just want to check in. I've been doing a lot of talking. What questions do you have about Screencast-O-Matic or the recording or anything at this point? And so you can either put something in chat or feel free to unmute yourself and ask a question. And I'm going to take a sip of water while you're thinking. I have a question. Go right ahead, Karen. And I'm wondering, this is more about the, not the machine here, but how can I read a script? <laughs> ah, well, yes. I'm trying to record without having the paper in front of my face. Right. There's different ways. It really kind of depends on your computer. And I use a script always. So I have experimented many different ways. One way that may work, and you'll need to experiment with your particular setup, but to have your recording screen be, say, this size, and then you have, if you're you know, recording something in uh, on your computer, you make sure that it fits into there. And then you have your script over here in the other part of the screen where the recording window isn't displaying, and that may help you. Another, and then I just have my, and I'm even doing it now. I have my finger on my little scroll mouse. So I'm just scrolling through my script as I'm talking. So I don't have, but if you're recording, you can also pause and move to the next, you know, so play around with it a little bit and see what works for you. But I think that might be one um, way of being able to see both what you're recording and the script. Does that help? Okay, I see you nodding, good. Any other questions right now? Yeah, go ahead, Clarissa. Hi, Helen. Such Hi. great, great information. I haven't used Screencast-O-Matic, and I was wondering what happens as far as captions and We're gonna captions get to all in, of okay. that. Yes, excellent. in Spanish. Excellent. Well, yes. Um, I'll show you when we get to the the okay. editing part because you're not going to be putting in captions while you're recording. It happens in no. the editing portion and the editing mode, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Any other questions right now? Yes, Kevin, yeah. go ahead. Yes. Hi, Helen. Hi. Um, back to Karen's question. I, I, I I'm interested in potentially getting a teleprompter uh -huh. so that I can look directly into the screen at yeah. my students and right. I can yeah. I can see the slides or read the script or whatever. Yeah. Do you know anybody who has gone through that setup? And um, I have done that in the past. There are, it depends on if you want to spend money or you want to go the free route. There are a number of free teleprompter applications out there, again, depending on the browser and your machine and all that. So I would probably recommend Googling it and seeing what comes up um, and then finding one because they all use different fonts and they have different set, you know, so I found when I was using them, some I liked better than others, just because it felt more intuitive to me, even though somebody else had recommended a different one. So I I'd, I'd just recommend doing a search and playing around with a few of them and seeing which one, but you could do the same kind of thing by just making sure your recording screen is down low and then you have your teleprompter stuff up here. Um, that may be a little tricky though, because if you're using, a browser-based teleprompter, you'd have to figure out how to have two windows open. So, you know, but you, there's, right. I'm sure there's a way to do it. And in fact, Kevin, what I would also recommend is Googling how to do teleprompter while using Screencast-O-Matic. And I bet there's a number of people who've written tips and suggestions and stuff like that. Super, thanks. Yeah, you bet. Google is my best friend. Any other questions before we go on to editing? Okay, great. So I'm actually gonna close this right now and I'm gonna edit a little video that I made previously just cause I didn't wanna make mistakes while I was uh, doing it here with you. I'm gonna open up the video editor. I'm on two screens. So it actually opened it up on a different screen. So this is my, my library of editing stuff. And you can see, again, it's got a bunch of stuff in here. I'm going to open up the demo. And now you can see it gives me some save options. And then I have the option to either delete it if I decide now, even though earlier I said I wanted it, if I don't want it, I can delete it, or I can open up the editor. 
And down here is your timeline. And that's what I was talking about where you can see those bits of silence. If you made a mistake and you left the silent part, I could just jump right here and know, okay, either in front of it or after it is where I made my mistake. I'm gonna cut that part out. But this shows you your audio part. It shows you the timeline so you can see the length of the video. Let me make it a little bigger. Hopefully you can see it a little better. And it has this magnify option. You can over here in the right, toggle narration on and off. So if I was talking, but I decided I didn't do it well enough, I'd rather record my audio separately and um, have it laid on as a separate track. I could turn off this narration and you see that that audio disappears. I could add music. They have a lot of stock music. You can also upload your own. And this is all, um, what do we call it? Royalty free opens, you know, whatever it is. It's in Screencast-O-Matic, so it is there for you to use. You don't have to pay royalties on using it. You can show the cursor. So I'm somebody that I'm always waving my mouse around, so I don't usually find the cursor that I've done very helpful. So I typically take the cursor off but if you are somebody who's a little more intentional with your cursor, you can either toggle it on and have it be showing during the recording or toggle it off. And if I recorded webcam and then I think, oh, I'm in that yucky t-shirt, I don't want to be, them to be seeing me in my yucky t-shirt, I can turn the webcam off and it will just show the desktop. That's an all or none thing. So you can't turn the webcam off just for a portion of it when you're here in the editing. You can only do that when you're actually recording it. But if I realized that I didn't want to show myself after all, I have the option at this point in time to turn it off. I'm going to turn it back on. And then here, Clarissa and everyone, is where you can add captions. You can either upload a file. You can use blank captions if you want to transcribe your own or you can use speech to text. It is an auto-generated thing, so it's not gonna be 100% accurate, but you can do speech to text. It takes a little while to render, and then you can go in and edit it. So you've got you know, a fairly easy way, especially if you train yourself to speak fairly clearly and enunciate properly, it's gonna do better. I believe you have a drop down so you can choose other languages. So you could let it know, I want you to be doing it in Spanish or whatever language. I don't even know what this would be pronounced as, but in any case, you've got the option. English is the default, but you can choose. It used to be, and I wasn't able to do enough research right now to make sure it's still this way. I think it is though, is. Screencast-O-Matic captions used to be and possibly still are what's called open captions, which means they're always on screen. The user can't turn them off the way you can with closed captions like on YouTube. It's not a huge deal. Captions are the important part and making sure they're accurate with punctuation and all that. But you just want to be aware of the difference if you're trying to turn them off and you can't. It's because they're open captions. Particularly if you're doing a demo, it's also good to keep in mind that captions may be covering up something that's kind of important at the top or the bottom of the screen. So if you're doing a demonstration, try to train yourself to make sure whatever you're demonstrating is in toward the center of the screen so there's no way it's going to get covered up for somebody that needs to have captions on. Now, remember I said you could add arrows, boxes, and other things during editing. Here's how you do it. So from the, oh, I got to get out of there. Over here, I have a tools menu. And when I click it, it gives me those same things that we saw with the Zoom when we were in the recording, but it actually gives me a few more like sound and replace things, et cetera. But so I can cut and I'll show you how to do that. I click cut. It gives me this little red line and I can just drag it to however far I want to cut or however little. And then when I click OK, that piece of it is cut out. If I realize I've made a mistake and I cut too much, I can, on a Mac, hit Command-Z on a PC. I believe it's Control-Z. And I don't know if you saw, but it added back in 
that little bit that I had originally cut out. And that's the same thing you're going to do with any of the tools. You would click tools. You'd go to say, I want to add an arrow. I'd go to overlay. I'm going to say arrow. It gives me the options of all the different shapes, but I want an arrow. So I'm going to click it quick style. I can change the color if I don't want it. I can make it a fatter arrow. You know, I can customize it in whatever way. And then when I come here, I can have my arrow and I can move it. So you can get really fancy. That's why I like to do it here because I have more, I feel like I have more control and can get more specific than when I'm doing it during the recording phase. But again, it's totally up to you when you wanna do it. So, and you'll now see down here a little overlay. So it's showing me where the arrow starts and where it fades away. And I can change that if I want, oops, come here. I can move when the arrow appears and when it ends. So you've got a lot of different options. Uh, what else do I wanna tell you about? Oh, I know, there's another one. Okay, so I say, okay, so now it's there. And so if I play the video, watch. Hey, welcome to our walk through the template. This is the homepage, which- So you can see where the arrow appeared and then it faded out. If I want to, so remember I said, if I decided I didn't like this audio and I was gonna record my own separate audio track, how do you get it in here? So with the tools option, you can say insert and I can say, a new a existing recording, or I can, with the sound, I can, oh, that's something different. Um, where did it go? There it is, nope, insert. So you can add different tracks. You can also say I have a, say you're doing a, a lecture and you wanna use it both for your basic class and also for your advanced class, but you wanna have different introductions. So you can have your basic video and then you can, on one of them, import in the one introduction at the beginning of the recording and save that for 101 and then for 102 you have your basic recording and you import in a different introduction at the beginning so there's lots of different ways that you can customize the options to really make it easy and simple for you to use this in multiple ways one thing I wanna show you is a transition, which is really kind of cool. One thing to know, a transition only shows when there's been a break in the recording. So let me find a place where I am doing something different. Okay, so you can see here, I've got one canvas page and then over here, I have a different one. So I'm gonna cut out all of this blank stuff first off. And then now, hopefully, well, you probably can't see it because it's very faint, but there's a little dashed red line that indicates where I cut that piece of the recording out. And I'm going to put my cursor just in front of the red line, which is my initial screen. And I'm going to say transition. By default, it gives a one second transition. I usually just go with the default because I'm kind of lazy but you can have different options. And then I'm gonna say, okay. You can also change the type of transition up here if you wish to. And now watch what happens. I'm gonna start the recording here. You can see the first module is in. So it was pretty quick, but you saw it kind of faded from the one to the other. So the transitions can be really nice. So you don't get, don't get those abrupt and choppy changes from one screen to the next. You can have it fade in or you know if you use a different transition type um it's just a smoother visual experience for your viewers the other thing i'm going to show you and then i want to stop for questions there is a zoom tool so let's say i'm doing a demonstration and i'm going to turn my cursor off because it always bugs me i can click into the video area and it opens up this zoom option. So I can say, I wanna focus in on this part of the screen. And so I, and this is a little tricky. So I get the screen size that I want. I can even move it if I wanna be looking at a different part of the screen, but I'm gonna stay up here in the corner because it's easy. Then I come down here in the timeline 
And I click this little circle to say, yes, that's where I want it to be. And you'll notice it now has that zoom area showing right there. Then I'm going to, and I'm just making up how long, I'm gonna say here, I wanna stop the zoom. So I focused in on a little bit. Now I want it to zoom back out to the full screen. So I'm gonna say reset. And I'm gonna say, yes, here is one where I want it to do that. And now if we watch it, you'll see, hopefully if I did it correctly. You can see the first module is intended for faculty and says, do not. So it's really nice when you're doing demonstrations and things to help focus your students on what you want them to be looking at. You can add arrows, you can do all the same things once you've zoomed the screen, but it's just a nice way to make sure they're really seeing what you want them to see. Okay, a lot of information and it was very quick, I know. Hopefully, I'm going to show you how to get this recording later so you can come back and stop and start as you're going through. But what questions do you have about editing at this point? Okay, I've either totally flummoxed you or I said it clearly enough that you have no questions. We're going to move on to talk about studio. So before we do that, let me just check in any other questions at all about Screencast-O-Matic. Yes, I have one. Yes, go right ahead. When you um, cut the first editing that yes. you it was cutting, it's only cutting um, the beginning or the end. Is there a way to cut in the middle? Yes. So it will cut wherever I want it to cut. So let's say this piece right here where I'm waving my thing. Let's say that was a cough and I knew I wanted my cough to get out of there. I can put my cursor in front of the cough, come up and choose cut, and then drag the little red. Oh, come here. Sometimes it's hard to grab. I can drag it to the other side of the cough. And now I don't know if you can see it, it's a little bit hard on you know, the double screen, but you can now see there's this red area. And when I click okay, it's gonna cut that out. So you can cut Hi. at any point in the recording. Thank you. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. And then if I realize, oh wait, that wasn't the cough, the cough was later, I can undo it by doing the command Z or control Z. And now you see it popped back in there. So you could play around with that. And Davina, you've got a question, go right ahead. Yeah, a uh, quick question. Um, you mentioned on the captioning component, uh, how you can use the um, speech to text yeah. component. If I'm narrating a demonstration, um, such as the video you have here, the speech to text is going to be pulling from that audio, correct? Yes. I'm not gonna yes. be like relaying an audio, okay. Right. Perfect. Although if you were importing an audio and you imported it first and then ran the caption tool, it would be pulling from that, but it's not going to pull from an external file. It will only pull from, and I'm pointing over at my screen, it will only pull from the audio that is associated with this recording. If hopefully Perfect. that makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Any other last minute questions about Screencast-O-Matic? Okay, let's first I'm gonna give you a um, beginner's guide resource. I'm gonna put it in chat. I also have a resource screen at the end of this session. So it'll be there and you can grab a screenshot of it. But if you wanna go ahead and just click that open and save it, uh, you know, have it open on your computer, you can look at it later, bookmark it. It's a nice little beginner's guide to help you get started. Okay, so, um, Studio. The Studio tool is in Canvas and it actually uses the Screencast-O-Matic interface. How lovely is that? So it's going to look very familiar when you start using it because of what you just saw uh, in the demonstration we did together. Studio allows you to record and upload videos as well as to um, add and edit captions. So you can access Studio right from the global navigation you'll see that it's over here in the 
global and it's i don't know where they got that icon but it's like a screen with weird little appendages coming out of it but that's the studio icon you also can have it enabled in the course level navigation if you just want to deal with not your whole library of videos but just videos for this particular course and so it's right here um what else do I want to say about that part? Yeah, I'm going to go into my studio library from the global navigation. So it shows the videos that I have already either recorded or uploaded. And up here, you've got your options to record either a screen capture or video. This doesn't give you the ability that you have in Screencast-O-Matic to do the little window in a window thing. You can either only do your desktop or only do your um, webcam, but you've got the option to choose what you're going to record. You can add a video, and by that they really mean upload. So if you've already recorded something in Screencast-O-Matic, or you found a YouTube video or whatever, and you want to pull it in, you can use the add option. I never do collections, but that's a way of creating organization and, and doing all that kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> from the little options, it shows me videos that maybe someone else shared with me. It shows me my course media. And then I've got settings if I wanted to change something in the settings or if I wanted to see analytics, how often something was watched, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So all that's going to be found in the little options slide out window. You pretty much have this, whoops, that's not what I want to do. I want to go back to the library. You pretty much have the same versatility as Screencast-O-Matic with recording and editing while you're doing it. The one important reason I can think of why you might want to have Screencast-O-Matic account as well as Studio is that Studio is currently being sponsored by the CVC OEI until June 2022. But not all colleges have enabled it because we don't know yet if that funding is going to continue after that point. So some colleges have said we don't want faculty to get started with it if it's going to go away. We just don't know what's going to happen. If for some reason the funding doesn't get renewed for CVC, it's possible that your college may decide they don't want to spring for studio on their own and you would lose access to it. If you have actually recorded and stored your videos in Screencast-O-Matic, you're going to always have access to them. You wouldn't lose them from your studio account. And for me, another reason to have both studio in Canvas and Screencast-O-Matic is because once you've saved a recording in studio, you can't edit or revise it. It's, it's done. So you can edit and do things while you're recording it. But once you've saved it, you can't go back and make changes, whereas in Screencast-O-Matic, you can always go back and re-edit something that you'd already saved. So the choice is totally up to you, but just some things to consider as you're figuring out, do you want to spring the, for the 20 bucks for Screencast-O-Matic? Okay, um, a really cool feature of Studio is the ability to add in knowledge check questions right into the video. And they can even be integrated into your gradebook if you want. So I'm going to show you if you see on these three, these two have a little rocket ship in the corner, and that's the Canvas quiz icon. So this indicates that I've added a knowledge check to this one and to this one. But this video doesn't have it, so I haven't added a knowledge check into this one. It's as simple as clicking the options for the video, going to the quiz option and either adding a quiz or editing the existing quiz. And remember how I mentioned earlier, you may want to use the same recording for multiple classes. You could have the same recording for your basics class and you have one quiz and then you add a different quiz that is a little more advanced for the advanced class. And then when you're embedding it, you can select which video, excuse me, which quiz is going to display for that version of the video. If I click it, it's going to show me the video. And you can see right here, I've 
is where I've added a question. So it shows you that little question mark icon to indicate where questions have been added. And I can either click it if I want to edit the question, or I can just go somewhere else in the video. Let's just go here. And it's going to take it a minute to get there. Come on. Ah, now it's not letting me do it. OK, well, I'm going to show you this part. It, oh, there it is. So I got the plus sign. So I can click anywhere and add a new question. The question choices are either multiple choice, true, false, and multiple answer. There's no option for essay or short answer or anything. So you, it's just by default. And if I do, let's say a true, false, I would add whatever my question is, is this puppy cute. cute, true or false, you would select what the correct answer is. And then it gives you the ability to add feedback. So after the students have taken the quiz, it would then display your feedback for the correct answer, for the incorrect answer, or general feedback, depending on what you'd added. And then I would save it. And so now we have, and oh, I don't know why it's taking so long to render. Let's see if it will play for us. This cute. So it just opens it up, it stops the video wherever you put the question, it asks it, the students would answer, and then they would go on, they'd click done, and it would continue playing. So it's very simple, it's a nice little tool. It's great to either use formal or informal kind of assessment um, and to get students focused on things. I'm gonna discard that. You also have the ability, let me get out of here, to add annotations. And that's essentially done the same as adding a question, but it's not part of a quiz. So it isn't anything that would go into your grade book or you know, give them a grade or anything like that. It's just, if you wanted to point something out, like notice how the speaker is doing this or bring their attention to something, you could add annotations throughout the video. Questions about this part of it? Okay. Uh, yes, go ahead, Renata. Oh, I thought you unmuted. No, sorry. I, I think I made a mistake. Oh, that's fine. I thought you were going to ask a question. I apologize. Helen, I have a question. This is yes, go back. ahead. So, or, or is a comment, I guess, or confusion. So when you <laughs> create something within a page or a quiz or an announcement, and that's where I start my studio, do I have to then come out to the global navigation to then add captions or quiz or annotations? I'm gonna show that right now. Oh. And then I'm gonna show you how you can um, add a video to a page. All right, so, All right. thank you. <laughs> yes, and if, if I don't answer specifically what you need to know, Monica, let me know in a little bit, okay? All right. So captions, let's say I wanna add captions to this one. I'm gonna click it open, whoops, I'm gonna click it open, come on. And right here in these options, I've got a captions option. I can either upload a caption file if I happen to have one, and I would indicate what language that file is in, or if I want to use the speech to text application that is built into Studio, and it's fairly accurate. You will still have to go in and correct punctuation, but it's pretty good. I can say over here, English, I can request captions. It takes a little bit of time for it to render. This one was pretty quick because my video is less than two minutes. Once it renders, I can now click review and publish. And you can see right down here are my captions. So I can make sure you can access the scheduler. I know I want that capitalized because it's the tool. Uh, Canvas, they spelled wrong. So I would go in and correct that. But as you can see, it's pretty simple to go in and correct whatever I need to correct. It does a pretty good job with punctuation and I can play. You can access the scheduler via the calendar tool in your Canvas account. 
One little so it will just play for me if I want to stop it. Course isn't enabled, meaning I can stop it up here. I can jump down to another part. So you can do all kinds of things. One thing you can't easily do is I don't know if any of you have familiarity with captions in a application like YouTube, where you can really adjust the timing and make sure that a sentence is all on a screen and then the next sentence starts on the next screen. That's not easy to do here. Um, you may be smarter than me and can figure it out, but I have not figured out an easy way. So I don't usually mess with what is in this little speech box. I just make sure the punctuation and capitalization and word matching are correct, but I don't try to mess around with making sure that meeting is up here and et cetera, because it, it just is not easy to manipulate in that way. But it is a pretty good speech to text tool and it's pretty easy to go in as you can see and adjust capitalization, punctuation and word matching. Once I've done whatever, and I'm not going to do the whole thing while you wait, but once I've done it, I would then say publish. And now my captions are published. So when I embed the video on whatever Canvas page in my course, it's going to have captions available to it. Um, what else? Uh, let me show you how to get it on a page. So this was called, I don't remember what this one is, scheduler in Canvas. And actually, I think I already have it there. So let's see if I'm accurate about this. I'm going to open up the edit. I'm going to go down below and give a couple spaces. Now, up here in the rich content editor, in the apps option, you're going to find studio. And that's the, the version you're going to use to embed it on the page. To do your recording and stuff, you can use either of these. But when you actually want it on the page, you need to make sure you're embedding it using the rich content editor. So I'm going to click studio. It's going to show me the videos that are in my library. And I'm going to say, I want this one. I'm going to say no media tabs. Embed. And then there's my video. So it's as simple as that. If I had added media tabs, let me show you what that one looks like. Go to studio again. I'm going to say this one. I'm going to leave display media tabs. And now below it, that's what allows students, if you want them to be able to have it, be able to have a sort of running discussion or you want them to comment or anything, you would want to make sure and leave the uh, media tab so that they have this comment field available to them below the video. If you don't want it, you can disable those so that it just shows the video like you can see there. If I didn't say that in a way that made sense, let me know. But as you can see, embedding a video is pretty darn simple. Yes, Monica. Yeah, so the question that I have is, I don't know if anyone's noticed that in studio before we used to, students used to be able to just click on the CC for the captions. Oh, yes. So I'm going to show you that part. Yes, <laughs> it, it is not. So here's what Monica is saying. It's not immediately obvious when captions are available. There's no, you know, on YouTube, there's the little CC icon right there in the media player and you, you know what to do. That's not true in studio students or you whoever has to go to settings and then you'll see the captions option and then you have to click it on in order for captions to play it's not immediately obvious and so that was in my notes one of my recommendations is especially the first couple of videos that you're using with studio above the video put a little note saying to find captions go to settings and maybe even give them a um, little screen capture image of it and explain to them what to do. Because if they've never seen a studio video before, they may just think, oh, there aren't captions for this video. What am I going to do? Because they don't understand that it's not going to display until they click open the settings option. So Monica, is that answering what you were asking? Yes, that's, that's okay. exactly what I was. 
hoping that maybe it was just a glitch on my computer. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, un and I don't know why they've set it up that way because it's not particularly user friendly, right. but <laughs> that's the way it is. So I would just recommend putting a note on, at least on the first, you know, and just copy and paste on the first couple saying, hey, here's captions are available. Here's how you find them. That's a wonderful tip. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other thing to know about captions and Renata, yes, there will be a, unless you already left, there will be a recording and it is, uh, there's no easy way to tell you how to get there. I'll do that at the end because I, I lost my train of thought, but yes, there is a recording. Um, captions in studio are off by default every time. They also display at the top of the screen. So most of us are used to having captions display at the bottom. So if you're doing that demonstration and you're making sure you're not showing anything at the bottom of the screen, well, if you're going to use studio, you have to make sure you're not showing anything at the top of the screen because that's where studio captions display and you can't move them. So just keep that in mind that they are off by default every time. So every time a student needs them, they're going to have to go in and turn them on. That's why those that instruction of where to find the captions is gonna be so important as they're learning this tool right along with us. You also don't have the same editing tools for captions when you upload a YouTube video. So you can, if you recall, when we were over here in studio, you can add a video either from your computer or from YouTube, but you don't get the same caption editing ability. There is a workaround, and I'm going to show that to you in a minute. However, let me say right up front, I'm not making any claims about the copyright legality of doing so. At the very least, I would recommend you include a clear attribution on your Canvas page so there's no mistaking that this YouTube video content was not created by you. It's not something you're claiming, you're you know citing where you got it from. The caption workaround is a multi-step process, but it probably will be easier than using Amara or trying to transcribe the captions for yourself if you don't have access to a captioning source like CaptionSync. You can upload, once you've done the YouTube video, you can upload an SRT file, which is a pretty standard specialized caption for, file format, or a VTT file. And here's what you do. I'm going to show you. You're going to go to YouTube and grab, and I'm, you can get this in the recording. You can also, once I give you all the steps, you can take a screenshot of this so that you've got the steps, whatever works for you. But I'm going to walk you through it. Make notes if you're a note taker or just watch and listen and know that you can come back to the steps later. You're going to go to YouTube and grab the URL of the YouTube video that you want to caption in studio. And I have a URL that I already grabbed, so let me copy it. The next thing you're going to do is go to downsub.com, and I'll show you that. And I'm going to paste in the URL of the video that I want the SRT captions for. I'm going to then say download. And one thing, this down sub site has a ton of ads and pop ups. So just ignore them, close them out whenever they pop up. It's just this is the best site to do what we need to do. But just be aware there's going to be all kinds of pop up ads. So I'm going to say download. It's doing its thing. And now right here, you can see it's got all this junk that's trying to capture your attention. But right here, it says SRT file. That's what we want. So I'm going to now download that by clicking it. It's going to download to my computer. Here's where it gets slightly less than intuitive. I don't want to say hard, but it's less than intuitive. I'm going to open, well, I'm going to find the file in my downloads area. And I wanna edit it because, because they're auto-generated from YouTube, we know YouTube caption files are not accurate. So I need to go in and edit it before I upload it to Studio. Mm. 
So I've got my file. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say open with because I want to open it in a text editor platform. I don't want to open it in the SRT format that it's in. So I'm on a Mac, which means I'm going to go to text edit. If you're on a PC, I think you're going to use notepad or, or something like that. It's just a plain text editor. So I'm going to say open with text edit. And now here's my captions. So I can go in and make whatever changes I need to make with capitalization and punctuation, et cetera, et cetera. Rudolf Draggers, that is not his name. It's Rudolf Dreikers. So you can see, depending on the language and the speaker, et cetera, there may be a little bit of cleanup, there may be a lot of cleanup, but you can easily go in and change capitalization, punctuation, and word matching. Then here's the other part that is not entirely intuitive. I want to save it, but I'm not going to save as. Some of you may be like me in the habit of saving as because I want to give it a special title and do whatever. Don't because we actually still want it to save in the SRT format that originally was, even though we're editing it in the text format. So I'm just simply going to say save and on my Mac, that would be command S. So it's going to save the exact same file that I had already downloaded, but now it's going to have my edits in it. So that's the first part of it. Now I'm ready to go to studio and bring my video and my caption files into studio. So I'll go back to my studio area. I'm going to add a video. It's going to, whoops, let me go back to my library. Now I have my video there. That's the one I just added. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to click captions like we did before. But this time, you see, it's not giving me the ability to manage captions in the way where we could um, edit them before. It's only going to give me the ability to upload. The language I want is English. So I will click that button. I will navigate to where that file was. And when I click it, it's now going to render. It takes a little bit of time. Looks like maybe it's done already. Let's see. Captions, yes. So captions are already here. So, I'm changing like this. and you can see they're showing here at the top of the page. What are, what are some of the strategies? That so, again, just because you have the technical capacity to add captions to a YouTube video in this way doesn't mean there aren't copyright considerations. So because you're using the video for educational purposes and it's located in a secure password protected environment, it will most likely fall under the fair use doctrine. But it would be prudent to check with your DE department to see if your college has any kind of specific guidelines about using third party videos. Please do not use Helen told me I could as your legal defense, because I'm not telling you you can. I'm just saying you have the, you can. I'm not saying you may. Anyhow, it's a great workaround. Let me show you all those steps again. Uh, so you can, so you, you grab the YouTube URL, you go to down, down sub and get the SRT file. You're going to then open up the SRT file so that you can edit the captions. And the first thing you'll do is right click. Then you're going to open it in the plain text editor. If you're on a Mac, that's going to be text edit. If you're on a PC, it's probably going to be notepad, although you may have some other one on your computer. So you're going to make sure to right click. You don't want to open it like normal. You just want to right click so that you get the option to open it in a different format than the SRT format. So you open it in the plain editor. Then you're going to edit to your heart's content, make sure it's all proper. Then you're going to save the edits, but not save as. You're just going to save so it stays in the SRT format, not in the plain text editor format. Then you're going to upload the video to Studio if you haven't already. And then you're going to upload the edited caption file to Studio. Once you've done it a time or two, it's probably not going to feel so complicated. It just has a number of little steps. Okay, 
I've got a couple, uh, and I'm going to pause this here for a moment if somebody wants to take a um, screenshot of the steps. And then I'm going to show you some resources and I'm going to ask for questions. I have given you a lot of information and here are the resources. There's the beginner's guide that I already shared with you in chat. There are Canvas Studio Guides. So they have a whole lot of guides about using Studio. So if it's new to you, I would recommend going to this little library and um, checking those out. You could also just Google it if you don't want to try to type this in. Here's the down sub resource for doing the caption files. And here, if you're not sure how to edit an SRT file, here is a how-to resource for you. Again, you could either take a screenshot of this if you wish, or when you come back to the recording, you'll be able to um, look at them and type them in there. Okay, before I take questions, let me offer a recommendation. Set aside 30 minutes in the next three days to play around with Studio for a little bit. Practice recording, practice editing, practice uploading a video, practice with the um, caption workaround. Nothing about Screencast-O-Matic or Studio is very difficult to learn, but the best way to retain learning is to use it right away. Probably everything we covered today is making sense to you right now, but if you wait a week or two or five or six before you get in there and start playing around, I guarantee you're going to be saying to yourself, gosh, I know she said something about being able to add a text box or upload captions, but I can't remember how she said to do it. So go in and play around in the next three days and it will get embedded in your long-term memory. The recording of today's webinar can be found on the At One webinar playlist in YouTube. And I'm gonna put that in chat as well. One second. That's the direct link to it. You can also find it by going to, now see, here's that stupid pop-up. You're gonna get that up in the browser when you're on Downsub, it's gonna say, message waiting, just ignore it. Um, if you go to cvc.edu events, which is the CVC events calendar, it's easy to miss, but there's a little link here to our YouTube channel, and that will take you to our webinars playlist, and they're in chronological order. So. Today's webinar isn't there yet. I have to let it render and upload it. It'll be there later today, but that link I put in chat is taking you here. Or if you lose that link, just go to the events, cvc.edu events and click the YouTube thing and that'll get you there. Okay, I've given you a lot of information. What questions do you have at this point or comments or yippee, I'm so excited to try something. So feel free to unmute or put your question or comment in chat. Good, I'm glad you all got some good information. Yeah, it does fit research on learning. I mean, this is just such a great way to really personalize and customize and humanize all of the stuff we're doing with our students online. Any other questions or comments that I can help you with? You may be saturated. I realize that. Hi, Helen. Um, yes. Thank you for all of the information. I was wondering if you could go back to your screen with the list for the workaround. I wasn't quick enough yes. on the screen capture. Yes. Let and then me. you mentioned earlier that um, for studio, there's funding for a certain amount of years. Um, and you mentioned that if, if it's not continued, we will lose access to our videos. You might. Do you know where we are in, in the- Yes, it's, it's funded through June, 2022. So you have almost okay. a full year of it. And okay. some colleges have not enabled it because they, you know, they're, they're worried that if it goes away, they'll have a faculty revolt on their hands. So depending on your college, it may not even be part of your campus. Yeah, I use it. I'm okay. just concerned now that yeah. I may lose access. Yeah. And, I, and so, I make a lot of videos outside of it anyway, like you did. Yeah. But I, I do want to go in and get my captions, if nothing else, so I don't have to do those over again. Right, right. And you can download from Studio. So, and I think, I haven't tested it, but I think 
once you've added captions, when you download, it should be able to um, come complete, you know, with not only the video, but also the captions, but. Yep, I, was, little... I have been able to download the captions okay. separately and edit them before. So um, okay. I'm pretty yeah. confident I can do that. Yeah. Thank you so you much. Betcha. And for anybody, a little tip, if you are editing captions with the workaround I showed you, create a little folder on your computer and save all of your edited caption files so that you've got them. So should something happen to studio or whatever, you don't have to go in and re-edit that file. You've already got it saved. You can just upload it again once um, everything comes back available to you. Lisa, do you have a question? Oh, no, okay. And. Ursula, did, did your whole question get answered? Hopefully. You're welcome, Cheryl. Yes, that was very helpful. Okay. Thank you so much. Good. Um, give an example of how, well, it, it closes the equity gap because as you make things more personal and human, and additionally, as you offer content in multiple um, modalities, both of those things have been shown to support students that are perhaps struggling or at risk or, or less likely to succeed the students that need that extra little boost. Both of those things have been shown to be very powerful strategies in supporting students that um, aren't the ones who are going to muscle through and do be successful no matter what's going on. Those things support the students that um, would be more likely to fail or drop out or do whatever. So it isn't that it specifically does a certain thing. It's just that the humanizing and the different modalities are both global strategies for closing equity gaps. Hopefully, Jeffrey, that makes sense. Uh, you're all very welcome. Any other last call for questions before we say adieu for the day? Sorry, it's me again. No um, problem. Yes. This one is um, related, but not quite the same. Um, for feedback, assignment feedback. So, you know, you can do videos and audio yes. in there, but it doesn't caption those. Right. And I know you can annotate. Like, how have you handled that? Have you done some of that? Because my students like it, but it's a lot of extra work to do both, you know? What I do actually is at the very beginning of the, in the first week, I have a getting to know you survey. And I ask a specific question saying, I may offer video or audio feedback. Does that work for you? And then I make note in my grade book of the students that say, no, I want written feedback so that I'm only doing video and audio feedback for students that have said, yes, I would like that. And then I don't have to worry about captioning because obviously a hearing impaired student is not going to say, yes, I want video feedback. They're right. going to say, I prefer written. Right. Okay. Thank you for that because I did the exact same thing but I didn't know if that was okay. I did not know if that was enough. <laughs> it, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, you know, it, it's, um, students tend to self-select what's gonna work best yeah. for them. And so I think it's yeah. a reasonable way to make sure you're, you know, you're not doing away with video feedback altogether because we uh -huh. know there are students that really benefit from that. At, but we're also making sure we're not only doing video feedback for students that aren't going to be able to benefit. Right, from exactly. So yeah, I did the same thing you did. So I'll, I'll just Perfect. kind of go along with that then. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Okay. All right, everybody. I'm going to let you get on with your day. Thank you for spending time with me. I appreciate it. And hopefully you got some good information and your students are going to benefit from the professional and dedicated way you are approaching your online teaching. So thank you very much. All right. I'll see you next time.